most people never dare to evaluate really where they are. And you gotta know where you are before you can really determine your chances of getting what you really want out of life. If we can reduce stress, and incidentally, the same process that reduces stress is exactly the same process that will enable you to have a long-term balanced career. You know, so many times people say, well, I do this, but man alive, it hurt, it cost too much money or it take too long or, or whatever. I, I quit smoking, but you know, I gain 47 pounds or whatever, or I go back to college and get my degree. Uh, but you know, it'd take me 10 years and in 10 years, I'd be 45. Well, how old would you be in 10 years if you didn't go back to college and get a degree? But instead of that, what you need to do is you set your goal is identify the benefits. Why do I want to do this? Then you identify the obstacles which you've got to overcome. Did you spell out the skills and knowledge required? Did you identify the people, the groups and organizations to work with? Did you work out a plan of action? And did you set that date? You see, there's a formula. And the formula and the incident for the date you can't set a date on a lot of things. If it's applicable, you do. But for example, when do you finish education? You don't, do you? Now you finish school. You can make it easy, but you never finish your education. When you answer these questions, if you answered any of them with a no, I didn't do that, then what you've got is not a goal. It's still a dream. And that dream has got to have some foundation uh, to it. If you want to build a winning attitude, you need to take time, and this is probably gonna surprise you based on what you've heard me say so far, but you need to take time to be quiet. You need to do it at least four or five times a week. A lot of people say, well, that guy keeps talking about time for this and time for that. I don't have time for all of these things. Let me tell you how you can create an extra three hours every day of your life, guaranteed. Over 70% of all of the time spent watching television, you're watching things you have no interest in watching. Let me encourage you to do this. Take a slow, lazy, drifting, absolutely meaningless walk. Just almost go to sleep on the walk. Not an exercise walk, you need to do those too, but a very quiet walk. Pick out a place in your home where you can be absolutely quiet on occasion. If you have to get up 30 minutes earlier, that's wonderful. I don't know why, but I seem to wake up earlier in the winter months than I do in the summer months. And when I get up, it's pitch dark. I have a nice little office. I go in there and I turn on the gas log and I sit there. And every time I do that, without exception, I have the most exciting day of my life. I simply run through my mind the things I'm going to be doing. As you plan the day, as you think of all of the things we've got to be excited about, it really does renew your energy and it gets you excited about the day. Now let me tell you something. This is going to be one of the toughest things you'll ever do. When you sit down saying, well, I'm going to sit perfectly quiet for 20 or even 30 minutes, you will think of 2,868 reasons or things that you've got to do. You try to decide, do I raise the window or lower it? Do I turn the heat up or down? Do I get the air conditioner off or do I turn it more full blast? Do I really need to go to the bathroom? Am I going to get me a cup of coffee? What is that noise against the outside? Maybe I better check up on that. Resist the temptation. Spend a few minutes in quiet, reflective thought. It does make a difference. Take time to be quiet. Now we teach things that are generally not taught in school, as I already have said, but I want to talk about another little factor. 90% of the visits to medical doctors are directly or indirectly related to stress. 90%. My stress level, and I face as many deadlines as anybody you know. It's always a book production, a class I'm teaching, a seminar I'm presenting, and each one of them uh, requires time and concentration. Example, how many of you feel like I've made this talk before? Can I see your hand, please? Several hundred times I made it yesterday. You know what I did between yesterday and today? 
I spent over six hours getting ready for today. You see, I think it would be arrogant if I thought I could stand up and spit it out just because I did it yesterday or hundreds of times. That's arrogance. When you respond to life instead of react to it, react is negative. You get sick, go to the doctor. She gives you a prescription, says, see me tomorrow. You walk in the next day, she said, uh-oh, it's not working. Uh, we got to have to change their prescription. You get a little nervous. But as she smiled and said, hey, it's working. And so you have just, she's just responded. And you feel better because now you see some real hope in order to get ahead in life. I don't know how many of you uh, remember or recognize the name Howard Hill. Now, Howard Hill was a good Alabama boy. He was an archer. They say he was the best in the whole world. He entered 287 archery tournaments. He placed first 287 times. He was so good, he retired early because the other archers started to get unwilling to compete for second place. I've seen newsreels of Howard Hill where from 50 feet away, he had split an arrow dead center in the, in the bullseye, then he would take the next arrow and split the first one. He killed a Cape Buffalo with a bow and arrow, the most difficult game animal alive to bring down. He killed a Bengal, Bengal tire, tiger. He killed a 15 foot shark in, under 18 feet of water. Or was it an 18 foot shark under 15 feet of water? Well, it was a great big one in his way down there. I, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I do know that. <clears throat> He was a good one, there's no question. So, now let me emphasize the point. I've, I've never shot the bow and arrow professionally, but I'm an instructor extraordinary. I'm not certain, but I think that's French, which means I'm really good at it. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me tell you just how good I am as a teacher. If I could spend 30 minutes with any man or woman who will ever view this, providing your eyesight is good and your health is normal, at the end of 30 minutes, I would have you hitting the bullseye more consistently than Howard Hill could hit it on the best day he ever had. Sound like I'm bragging, but I'm not. I could do it. Provided, of course, you had first blindfolded Howard Hill and turn him around a couple of times so he wouldn't have a clue as, uh, you know, just uh, which way am I headed? And you might say, well, now, Ziggler, my goodness alive, fella, of course you could. That's ridiculous. How on earth could a person possibly hit a target he couldn't, see, he couldn't even see? It's a good question, but here's a better one. How can you hit a target you don't have? 